First and foremost, uh, yeah, somebody stirred up the harness nest. It turns out when you call their 30th anniversary 999 product uh, proxy, you and they say, oh, we're legalizing proxy play, and then people are searching. So I looked at this particular website. The traffic has just jumped, skyrocketed into oblivion since uh, the announcement of the 30th anniversary, and every single gender study major is now commenting on this, not having any IP background at all. As an IP attorney myself, I've been, I, I've been a patent attorney, which is the top of the food chain in terms of IP attorneys. We are far more significant and better than trademark attorneys or copyright attorneys because we can do both copyright and trademark, but a trademark attorney, assuming they don't have their patent, which they don't, that's why they're a trademark attorney, cannot do patents. So patents is the top of the food chain and everyone else is like, you know, just bottom feeders in my opinion. My personal opinion as a patent attorney. Um, where should I begin with proxies? Okay, first and foremost, right? We all know why they're reacting this way. They're reacting this way because some people made some videos and some people are looking at proxies and they're getting lots of likes on Twitter. Remember I talked about Twitter being an echo chamber and that Aaron dumbass, right? Like asking for advice. Why are game stores losing? They love Twitter. They love Twitter. So like, if you wanna piss them off, show off your proxy with 2000 likes to them, that's the way that you piss them off. Now the guy's arguments are incredibly, he's only 20 years old, so that makes sense now. Like it makes sense. And his parents are probably not lawyers. His parents don't have friends who are lawyers. There's no one in his argument, oh, other people are doing this. Why are you targeting me? Does is the one of the worst legal arguments you could ever make. Uh, if you're doing something illegal, uh, for instance, let's say that you are, uh, you're, you're 20, you're underage drinking, and you're like, oh, well, everyone that frat parties under, no, the cop doesn't care, you can call you. You call you, just because there's a 19 year old and an 18 year old drinking right next to it, it doesn't mean that what you're doing is not illegal. What you're doing is, if they deem it. The second thing that's very interesting is the cease and desist. To me, it means nothing. I get cease and desist all the time <laughs> from what's in a ghost. Like not recently, but there was a time period they would send them all the time to me. And I said, go after yourself, you know? A cease and desist is just like one of the weakest, it's not a lawsuit. They're not suing you, right? They're not taking you to court. There's no official court case. There's no documents and points where they're suing you. There's no damages they're claiming or any of that stuff. It's just, you know, a lot of young people, well, I guess like not even young people, a lot of people who are not non-lawyers they think a cease and desist is like, oh my gosh, I'm going to jail. This is obviously a civil matter. You're 20 years old. You probably don't own all that much money. You probably are massively in debt. Again, I can't speak for you, but I don't know how much money they would get from you because this website has not made any money, right? So, I mean, what are the damages? I mean, oh, you're doing, but you're a kid, you know, yeah. in school. So number one, the website is very impressive, made from a 20 year old, I give you that. But obviously this guy has no legal chops and he has no legal, let's call it moxie, right? Um, the reason that lawyers don't send other lawyers cease and desist as much, as soon as they realize that it's a lawyer, they realize, hey, you're either gonna sue me or not, choose. Stop sending me these love letters, right? And choose. So like, you know, here's the, pro here's the problem. And then they communicate and then they communicate. They're, Never communicate with another lawyer. If a lawyer wants to sue you, I say, let me, see. okay, if you want to sue me, sue me. You don't, you don't, okay. But I'm not going to respond to you. I'm not going to write you long love letters and say how much I love you. Oh, I'm going to help you. Gonna... No, 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 no. The more you respond to a lawyer on the other side, the worse you are off. That's why, you know, it's like the police, right? You never talk to the police when you're, right. even if you're innocent, you don't talk to the police because they know they want you to be guilty and they will say things to entrap you. And this is what they are doing with this kid and they entrapped him perfectly. My God, they entrapped him. Because then he started arguing, oh, well, other people are doing it. As soon as he starts arguing, oh, other people are doing it, you know it's over. You know you got the kid and the kid's gonna delete his website and that will be the end of that. And he'll, he doesn't have the balls to re-upload anything. I've asked him to sell me the website then I'll re-upload everything. 
Well, assuming that he didn't delete it. God, let's God, God forbid he's fucking deleted code. But anyway, here's my point. Uh, the issue of proxies, no, it's like the reserve list, okay? It gotta go to court. I want to go go to court, but the, who would be the who would be the perfect person to go to court with? It would be me. I got some free time, you know. I'm under a Joe Biden recession. I would love, you know, I own the website. I would love to bring, you know, they will sue me. It would probably be in Texas court. Their um, Hasbro attorneys are in Texas anyway. It's a law firm that I know very well. And we can pass the case. And I would love for there to be legal pro one way or another. Hey, proxies are good or proxies are bad. Proxies fall under the fan content creation or it does not. Right now it's unclear. And because it's unclear, Wizard of Coast is using this kind of abusive tactic of cease and desist to people they don't like. And this is selective enforcement. Yes. Selective enforcement. This is the whole, you know, hey, if I see, okay, I'm not going to say it, but it's the, you know, in recent political things, right? If let's say two people do something illegal, but one of them is a Native American, let's arrest the other one. <laughs> or in, in the past, let's arrest the Native American twice. So selective enforcement, I hate, um, and this is what they're doing. So there's a bunch of websites making a bunch of proxies. Let's pick on some people we know we can pick on. Hey, this guy, this 20 year old engineer, uh, he definitely doesn't have the chops. His dad's not a lawyer. He's not going to be a lawyer. Let's grab him and just. And this is what I disagree with. I wholeheartedly disagree with the selective enforcement. I think it's one of the worst things that ever happened in copyright IP law um, because instead of saying like, so his argument, they, they knew he would make that argument and that was the honey pot and they got him bad. They got him bad. The argument, oh, other people do it. Other people have paywalls, other people. Once you get in that argument, you've just basically made it that, oh, what I believe what I'm doing is illegal. <laughs> it's just not as illegal as other people, which then you're done. I would just say, hey, what I'm doing is not illegal. Your fan policy allows it, and I will continue to do it until you sue me in court. And when you sue me in court, I will see you there, my friend. Um, and uh, that's it. And then we would, and the court would decide. I would not settle. I would go to discovery, and I would ask them some very, very difficult questions, which they will have to answer legally under the law. Otherwise, they go to jail under perjury. I could have Mark Rosewater understand, and I'd be like, Mark. You said you wouldn't reprint the reserve list, but you did. Is that a lie? And he would have to say, yes, I'm a psychopathic liar. And it would be on the court record. Everyone would be clapping and be like, oh my gosh, you got him good. So that's, <laughs> that's you know, that I would have to really extend to get him, you know, to say something like that. But at the very least, I can get, you know, some clarification as what is a acceptable proxy, what is not acceptable proxy. Do you believe all proxies are acceptable? Do we have to use different mana symbols? What is so right now, there's no clarification as to what is acceptable and what's not acceptable because, again, you know, uh, fair use, all this copyright law, so on, blah, 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 trademark. They're really using trademark law a lot, which they do have trademarks over the symbols and so on. But that's all can be argued. So the enforceability of it, I think they're doing selective enforceability, which means they're targeting people that they know will shut down their website without cost. What, what they don't want happening is they don't want to spend a lot of money. Wizard of the Coast is cheap. We know. Wizard of the Coast does not pay its cosplayers. It does not pay its judges. It doesn't pay nobody. <laughs> right? Wizard of the Coast, time and time again, has been shown to be one of the cheapest, greediest. You know, if Bank of America says that your company is greedy, you're probably a greedy company. The last thing Wizard of the Coast wants to do is actually spend millions of dollars on a lawsuit and then be countersued, countersued for another million, right? So at that point, they could actually lose a lot. I always want to test one of these cases um, and it's not just because of this or it's also because I, I want to be the number one NFT attorney. I want to be recognized as the, the NFT attorney guy and I want fame. So, like I said, I reached out to him in both Twitter on MTG Line, which is public, and I reached out to him on email privately. Um, and I want him to sell me the website. I want to re-upload everything and then have them send me that cease and desist, which they probably won't do. If they do, I go say, F yourself. That's my response. And then they sue me. Hey, let's make a spectacle of it. I'm game. 
And you're like, oh, Tony, he can charge you so much money. Really? Why? <laughs> Why are they going to charge me? I, my argument would be people making proxies anyway under the fan content engagement, they're not costing Wizard Coast any reputation or any money because they're not going to buy the cards anyway. Right? They're making the proxy because it's cheap and they can enjoy the game. In fact, it adds to their game. It adds a level of, you know, hey, these people can't afford this 30th anniversary product, but they're still celebrating in their own way. It helps Magic brand, it helps Magic's goodwill, it helps Magic IP. That would be my argument. So, probably die by it. But anyway, I would become known and then I could advertise my NFT companies. <laughs> I, don't sell, I don't sell no NFTs, by the way. I know people will try to think I sell them. I, I've, never, I've never even minted an NFT before. So how would I sell one? But I'm still the number one NFT attorney. I talk about it all the time at IP conferences. Probably like their lawyers have attended my conferences I've talked about. I mean, they're pretty, they're like 100 people in the, in the room and they're all lawyers. And they travel from like Arizona and so on. They're, they're traveling to see me uh, speak about uh, NFTs. Not anymore because obviously the crypto, you know, FTX thing has, uh, has kind of dampened my speaking engagements, if you will. Bye, guys.